so in our last class we have discussed about approach to shock in that class we saw that how we have an exhaustive list of information when you're approaching a patient with shock so how to cut down on that today we'll discuss how to differentiate between two major variety of shock that is cardiogenic shock and septic shock mean arterial pressure is equal to cardiac out into systemic vascular resistance cardiac output in term depends upon the heart rate and stroke volume stroke volume depends upon the preload times contractility cardiogenic shock so the most common cause of cardiogenic shock is acute coronary syndrome especially the stemi so in this situation there is problem with the contractility so contractility goes or compromised right so when the contractility is compromised in cardiogenic shock what happen in the early period in the compensatory period the body will try to maintain the mean arterial pressure how they can either increase the svr or the heart rate or the both right so what will happen in cardiogenic shock contractility goes down which causes the cardiac output to go down that will cause svr to go up and heart rate to go up blood pressure that is sbp by dbp so the systolic blood pressure divided by the diastolic blood pressure and systolic blood pressure depends upon the cardiac thrust the heart has to contract against the systemic vascular resistance so it has to put some energy so that contraction that is produced by the left ventricle is otherwise or indirectly measured by the systemic blood pressure right and the dbp is the venous clamp dbp diastolic blood pressure is determined by the venous caliber so what happens in cardiogenic shock let's see so we have a cardiac thrust because the contractility is compromised so cardiac thrust will be decreased in cardiogenic shock and because cardiac thrust is decreased sbp also will decrease so we have a sbp which has decreased now to compensate the sbr will be increased systemic vascular resistance will be increased that means the venous clamp will be tight very tight or has a constricted state or increased systemic vascular resistance right so the dbp will increase tremendously and we know what is pulse pressure pulse pressure is equal to sbp minus dbp from this equation you see sbp decreases dbp increases so this value will decrease almost the sbp and dbp will approach each other for example bp like 90 by 70 100 by 80 80 by 60 so these kind of blood pressure you when you see in your patient you suspect there is a cardiogenic shock do a ecg look for st segment elevation mi right and because the sbr increases that means the periphery is vaso constricted that means because there is no forward flow and the very very vascular vasculature is very tight so these two will produce a cold clammy skin is it it apart from other things like uh, delirium oliguria mottling all these things right you go to the patient's bedside and look at the blood pressure look at the heart rate look at the the, the skin and if the finding suggest we have a low pulse pressure that means the sbp minus dbp decreased if you have a high heart rate if you have a cold clammy skin we may have or may not have delirium we may have oliguria mottling of skin this thing can be there but these three when these are present this highly suggest cardiogenic shock like right? so in cardiogenic shock because the 
contractility is low to compensate the heart rate will increase and the s1 will increase because contractility is low so systolic blood pressure will be low because s1 is high dbp will be high it will produce a low pulse pressure so patient the low pulse pressure and periphery cold with increased heart rate diagnosis will cardiogenic shock now coming to septic shock so again coming from our equation the starting equation mean arterial pressure is equal to cardiac output into systemic vascular resistance so cardiac output is equal to stroke volume heart rate stroke volume is preload times contractility right and as well so what happens in septic shock the primary pathology of septic shock is in the svr so there is actually widespread vasodilatation so to start with the svr will be very very low the septic shock the svr will be very low from the starting so to maintain the math in the compensatory phase what will happen the cardiac output will increase heart rate will increase preload is something that you have to provide from outside from inside the contractility will increase heart rate will increase and cardiac output will increase to maintain the mean atrial pressure the cardiac output will increase heart rate will increase that's why cardiac septic shock is also called, so called high cardiac output state is not it so again coming to the pathophysiology so the blood pressure which is equal to sbp by dbp sbp denotes the cardiac thrust dbp denotes the venous clamp so in this case in septic shock the primary pathology is vasodilatation it is very very low starting in the beginning right and because it is low the cardiac output increases to compensate for it to maintain the map so cardiac thrust will increase so sbp will increase and dbp will decrease so what will happen to the pulse pressure pulse pressure which is equal to sbp minus dbp that will increase isn't it so in this case you will find a blood pressure of 150 by 60 170 by 60 so there is a huge high pulse pressure gap right and because there is vasodilatation it will cause warm skin there will be organ failure patient may have delirium oliguria mottling all these things will be there but the skin will be warm right so again discussing about these things if a patient is there if pulse pressure is increased and patient have a warm skin and with increased heart rate patient can have delirium can have oliguria can have mottling so this is the patient who are having septic shock so to compare between these two you see the delirium oliguria mottling are same in both of these but how to differentiate you can differentiate using the pulse pressure method and touching the skin so next time you go to the bedside of a patient the sister calls you patient is having hypertension just go and look at the blood pressure touch the skin check the heart rate if there is a high pulse pressure with warm skin deceptive shock if pulse pressure is low and skin is cold clammy it's cardiogenic shock do not have to wait for the specific laboratory investigation to come to diagnose septic shock or cardiogenic shock thank you very much in the next class we'll discuss about how to choose vasopressors in different kind of shock thank you very much